I got a 2005 F-250 right here in the driveway and it come here with multiple problems and I've already got to the bottom of the first two problems. The third problem is there's no tail lights. So that's what today's video is, is showing you my procedures on how to locate a problem like this and get to the bottom of it as quickly as possible and as systematically as possible to save you time and aggravation. Let's go ahead and get started with it. So a good place to start is to actually check all the fuses pertaining to the tail lights, the brake lights, such as that and uh, we'll go from there. So I went ahead and printed up the diagram on this system as far as the uh, really all the lights, headlights, tail lights, side markers, everything. And uh, but what I'm concerned with right now is just the ones on the back. That's the ones giving us the problem. And uh, this is what I'm seeing here hot all the time. This is fuse 18. This goes to the brake pedal. Then right here, these two fuses are also pertaining to the light system. So I'm going to go in there and check these fuses. So being this is a Ford, they never label what the fuses are. They just give you a number. So you have to pull up a location here. Like this is what you're going to see on the actual cover of the fuse box. It's just going to give you the numbers. Like there's 18 there. And uh, what was the other ones? Fuse 7 and Fuse 17. You would just look up here until you found them. Okay, there's Fuse 7 and there's Fuse 17 right above it. Now to see what these actually are, you have to go to the chart. And you have to print this stuff out or have an owner's manual or something. Let's look at Fuse 18 first. Fuse 18 is the brake pedal position switch. I'm not sure if you can read that. Indicator flasher relay. So that's the power for both of those. Number seven is the vehicle security module, the main light switch, and the main light switch, and the multifunction switch. And the other fuse was fuse 17. Fuse 17 is main light switch, vehicle security mode. So all I've got to do is really take this into the car and if I find any blown fuses then I can look to see which one it is. Let's do that now. All right, I'm at the fuse block inside the truck and here is the cover. And as you can see, there's nothing but numbers on there. That's the reason I had to print that out. And I'm looking for fuse 18, 17, and seven. Let me double check that. Let's see, uh, yeah, 18, 7, and 17. Now let me look on this cover to see where they're located. Let's use 18, 20 amp should be right here. The one right above it is going to be fuse 17. That don't look like the right, the right fuse. That's a 30 amp. Let's see what that calls for. Uh, let's see. No, that's supposed to be a 15 amp. Number 17 is supposed to be a 15 amp. Let me find a 15 amp and I'll change it out. Well, first, let me just go ahead and do a few checks. All right, so we know which is which now. 30 amp, that's suspicious right there. Let me get this to where you can see it. All right, we got power going in. And we got power going through the fuse. That fuse is good. This was number seven, power going in. Power going across the bridge in the fuse, so that fuse is good. Power going in. No power going out. This fuse is blown. Let me pull it and make sure. Oh yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but it's open. That little bridge is burnt right into. All right, let me get another 20 amp fuse and let's see if it blows it. There it goes, all right. It didn't blow when I popped it in there. Let's uh, turn the headlights on. 
Nothing there. Let's flip the blinkers on. Didn't see it blow. Let's hit the brake pedal. Oh, there you go. I mean, I missed it. It just blew. Okay. Well, that tells me one thing. We got to short the ground somewhere in this circuit. All right, so let me figure out what direction I want to go trying to find this. This can be like looking for a needle in a haystack. Yes, like a seek and destroy type mission. And I'm going to try to think of the smartest way to possibly do this. So let's follow out our uh, number 18. That's the one that's popping. That's going through the brake pedal switch. And right here is a splice that says this one right here is not being used. This one here is actually going on the cab of the truck. That's the rear lights on the cab of the truck. And it's getting this ground right there nearby. And then this one here, let's follow it over. That is a light green nine. Light green nine goes all the way across to the next page. Continues. Oh, wait a minute. It goes from goes from number nine as it goes across. Now their number is number four. All right, number four. All right, comes in here. Now it says chassis cab or accept chassis cab. This is not used, so I'm thinking it's going to be this side here. It continues down. And then from here, it actually goes into the trailer electronic brake control module. All right. Let's see where else it goes. All right, it goes into the multifunction switch. Now this is showing the way it normally is without the hazard switch pr pressed or without a blinker switch on. This is a closed circuit across here and it's closed here and it's closed here. And if you follow it down here, this comes out as a light green and orange. And from there, this goes all the way to the uh, left rear park stop and rear lights, in other words. That is your left rear park stop and turn lamp. All right, this is your right, and it's got a ground, and it's showing an orange and light blue. So this is with a box. So if we go up to our right side, the passenger side, there's an orange and blue. Let's follow that back, and that too is getting its power right here at the multifunction switch when when it's in the closed loop. In other words, the hazard light is not on and neither is either blinker. So we got voltage here and here originating from the same place. All right, I think the smartest way to do this is actually go to the source. We're having problems with the lights coming on and possibly this one too. So I wanna go ahead and go on the back of the truck and remove these rear lights and uh, I want to unplug both of them then I want to unplug this one also and then we're going to go back and we're going to start plugging these back one at a time to see if it continues to pop a fuse and that will help us sort out and kind of locate where this is at and that's the whole trick to doing a short to ground is trying to localize it and eliminate the rest. So if we don't find it here, we're starting at the very back of the circuit. If we don't find it in none of these three here, then we'll start going back forward towards the fuse, which would be the multifunction switch in this case. And then uh, also the headlight, the actual headlight switch. And it's possible that you could actually be getting shorted right here at the brake pedal switch. But I want to start at the very end of the circuit, then work my way back. With any luck, we'll find it somewhere between here and there. But at least it'll eliminate that part and we can move forward. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these lights and we'll see what we got. So I've got the tail lights removed here. Here's one of them. And here's the other, and I also got the one up here on top of the cab undone. And let's look at our wire colors here. All right, we do have our green and orange, and this brown, that is actually for the tail light. 
This is for the brake and the black is the ground. Let's go to the other side. All right, we have this orange with a blue tracer. That center one is brown. It looks black, but it is brown. Then the black for the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that fuse in the truck. Then I'm gonna plug these up one at a time. And we're gonna check to see if any of these actually pop this new fuse. And I'm only gonna plug up to this part. This is the backup lights. So that's a different circuit. So I'm only gonna plug up right here. All right, let's go hit the brake and see if anything pops. As you can see, I've got another 20 amp fuse in here, right here. So let's hit the pedal, see if it pops. Let me does not pop. All right, so we can rule that one out. We're gonna leave it plugged in place. Let me go ahead and get to this one. All right, we got plugged up. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna plug this bottom in too, only so I can get this thing back in place. Just want to unplug. Please least get the top, we'll just hold it like that. Now let me go see. All right, first I wanna double check this to make sure we are hot. And we are, let's check through, and we're hot there too. So the fuse is not blown. Let's hit the pedal. This fuse pop, let's pull it and see. I hope it's just that easy. Yep, there it is. Can you see that? It burnt the bridge from one side to the other. Definitely a blown fuse. Let's unplug that light because it must be right at the light itself because unplugged it does not pop the fuse, which is a good thing. That means we're not shorted the ground anywhere in the harness. It's gotta be inside the light itself. Let's take a look. Oh, this is just way too easy. So I think you can see though, instead of trying to run down wiring harnesses and everything, just start right at the source of the problem. All right, all right, I'm unplugged here. See if I can look inside of there. Uh-oh, oh yeah, right here. There's something loose in there too. This thing, look at that. All these wires are melted together. Well, that will definitely there's the ground exposed. These two wires are melted together. And keep in mind, this orange and blue, I think it is. Yeah, it's, uh, it's melted in to the brown wire, which is also screwing with the tail lights. That's the actual ground right there. Somewhere in here, it's actually touching this ground. And I can smell it. Oh yeah, it's got that electronic burnt smell. There's the culprit right there. So it looks like we got to get some new lights. These are aftermarket. I can just look at them and tell. Let me call the owner and see if, uh, if he's got some more lights. He owns all kind of vehicles. And if he don't have any, he'll probably know where to get them. So I lucked out. I talked to the owner and he knew exactly where a truck was. He can go get these off of. Wasn't on his place, it was somewhere else. And uh, he brought them, these are a factory, by the way. These are the factory, he's got a set of them here. And he went ahead and included this wiring harness, a part of it, in case there was any issue from the plug back, which there isn't that I can see. But what I'm looking at right now is this plug is very similar to this one, but it's not exact. I don't know if the old wire and harness will plug in to this one. If not, then I will take and utilize part of this harness and we'll just do some splicing with barrel splices, with heat shrink, 
and uh, make this repair. So I'm not going to bore you with all that. I'm just going to go ahead and get the job done. We've got to put this one back on and replace this one as well. I'll come back and I'll show you if this fixed it. So I'm going to turn the lights on. Let's see if we got tail lights. Tail lights are working on this side. I must have the blanker on. Let me turn the blanker off. I'll tell you what, let me just put the blanker to the other side. All right, we got blankers. Turn the blankers off. Now let's see if we got both tail lights. That tail light's on. It's awful bright out here, but it's definitely on. Tail lights are on. Let me see if I can get something to prop up this brake pedal and check the brakes. All right, I've got a pry bar here. Brake is depressed. Yes, sir. Brake light's working. Brake light is working. All right, this is a fix, but I do want to look at the ground, which is on the left side here, on the driver's side, on the frame. I want to look at it and see how bad a shape it is because this truck come from up north with the snow and the salt and everything so i just want to look at that and if it looks bad i'm gonna go ahead and i'll uh, clean that up so i took my creeper got up under the truck luckily i didn't have to jack it up plenty of clearance on this beast right here this is a, a big long truck i was able to get under there and inspect where the ground is on the left hand uh, frame or the driver's side this is exactly where the diagram said it would be. It looked pretty rough. It still had a lot of scale on it. The head of the, of the bolt itself looked pretty rusty. But to my surprise, when I actually took it out, the threads that that bolt went in were shiny. It still had good connection. The actual eyelet itself, it still had good connection. It was a good ground, but I went ahead and cleaned it up anyway. And I went ahead and took some NOAA locks. That's what I was referring to earlier. And uh, instead of using a uh, dielectric grease, get you some NOAA locks because it actually conducts electricity where dielectric grease does not. That's what I would recommend. I'll leave a link in the description for that if you can't find it locally, but you should be able to find it at your electrical supply houses. So I hooked the ground, got everything back together. And also on the bumper, there's some aftermarket lights and there was a, a little crappy ground there and it broke off literally with my finger so I added some extra wire and I went ahead and hooked it up to that main ground and got a good ground going for them as well. So that's basically it. I hope you got something from this video. The biggest thing I was trying to do was show you how to instead of like just start looking and not really knowing what you're looking for the first thing you need to do is find out what ain't working. You know in my case they told me tail lights wasn't working. So I went straight to the fuse, and then I had to pull up wiring diagrams to see what all is in that circuit from, from the start all the way to the end. And I actually started where the problem was at, and my idea was to work my way back forward if that was not it. And trust me, these shorty grounds can be anywhere. But luckily, this was an easy one. So hopefully you got something from it. Now I got other videos coming soon. I'm Russ Jones with Skill Savvy DIY.